Hello everyone, welcome to another Sims 5x5 five five building challenge. I'm Yurjagon, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you this building that I did. It's uh, not quite 5x5, five five. It's, it's in the three parts, as you can see here. It's a 3x5 and two bump outs, so that's 3x1, uh, with a 3x1 porch. So you can see what I've done there. We've got the little porch. We've got uh, the roof. I wanted to go with a lot of debug stuff. So um, I, I try to use debug as much as possible because you can. there's some really awesome things in there. So we've got these steel girders. That's debug. That's from get to work. And I thought they really added a bit of personality to this house. Adding the trim there just for just just to make the roof look more complete, and I guess I, I guess the word is homogenous. <laughs> it's the word that's coming to my mind. Um, I tried to figure out what what I wanted to use here for uh, the exterior, so I decided to go for brick and siding. Wasn't overly happy about the white trim. It's really difficult, and I don't know why, but on, on the, with the white trim, you know, they're on the edges. Um, sometimes the game puts them in weird places, um, so I was of two minds whether to do that or not, but I decided in the end to go for it. The main room and entryway are from uh, the pets pack, and then that rear bump off there with the round window that's going to be the bathroom so obviously with a three by five main in uh, main living area there's not much room i wanted to get a kitchen in and i wanted to get like a living room sleeping area i thought a murphy bed would be really good for the bed area but there uh, just wasn't I, I didn't want to use too many packs so i tried keeping it with uh two like two or three different packs uh, in addition to the base game. Trying to get the kitchen done here, I had a lot of problems figuring out the layout of the kitchen because it's so small. I wanted to put a refrigerator and a cooker in. I really wanted to put a sink in, but you'll find out here I just did not have the room for both a countertop workspace and a sink. So, uh, unfortunately, there's, there's no sink. <laughs> <laughs> in this build at all not even in the bathroom um your your sim is just gonna have to to eat off of paper plates you know um which is fine luckily the sims will throw away the plates and, and glasses and such uh if there's if there's no sink to wash them up then this is a starter home so i mean technically you could put a dishwasher in underneath a workstation uh, but again um i wanted this to be a starter home and a dishwasher is a little bit out of the price range for, for what I consider to be a starter home. Just added the flooring there. Trying to find a bed, as I said before, the uh, Murphy bed would have been great in here, but um, the Murphy bed is not in the base game or uh, back to work or uh, pets. So I really tried to keep this to, to no more than like, you know, two or three packs in addition to the base game. So. I believe I've got Seasons in here as well. Anything that was free, basically, as a free upgrade, a free free add-on to the game. Wanted to add something for the Sim to do for fun, so put a end table there in the middle, right in front of the bed, uh, with a cheapo TV on it. Decided to go for the debug lighting, as opposed to the saucer lights, just because I like I, I like the debug ceiling lights, and, and they don't cost anything. So again, if, if you're struggling for, for cash for a starter home, uh, the debug lights are perfect. They are a bit... I mean, you, you can't do auto lights on them. They're, they're perpetually always on. So it's just a trade-off. Decided to go for a more expensive bathroom. The shower and the toilet are um, quite expensive. But I figure this is such a tiny little house, uh, you need something of luxury, you know? Matched the curtains to the bed spread there just a little bit, trying to keep everything looking good together without any major, major color clashes. 
So with a house this size, there's only so much you can do. There is an indoor and an outdoor bin. Add in the heating thermostat and of course the fire alarm. Very important to put a fire alarm in, especially with the uh, with a starter home because your your sim's gonna not be able to cook at all. So uh, definitely need that smoke alarm in there. Wanted to go for some kind of skill building activity, so just having a look through here as to the different things that I could add. Thought at first, you know, I thought maybe fitness, but in the end, I decided to go for the standard chess table. Put that outside just under the eave of the roof, along with a couple of chairs. Then I started working on the outside a little bit more, adding in some decoration, train tools and such like, adding in a brick path going from the front door to the entrance of the lot. Not that your sims ever pay atten any attention to that. I had a huge trouble with the curved path. I hate curved paths. Really hate curved paths. Um, as you see here, I, I tried several times, uh, added in a little bit of a patio there for the chess table. Got a, a bit of a, a curved path there. Now, um, rule one of the sims, if it's ugly, hide it with plants. And you'll see exactly what I mean here uh, in just a moment. <laughs> so we've got this huge lot with a tiny little house. So I decided, you know, go through the trees. D didn't go with the debug trees because I, at this point we still had over 5,000 simoleons. So just went through the plants and trees, again, matching what's in the general area um, so that it, the lot kind of looks like an extension of the world or vice versa. Just like I said, adding in the different trees there just to make it feel like part of the world, you know? This bit took me, uh, the exterior stuff always takes me so long compared to the rest of the house. I think the exterior probably took me over, well over an hour to do. I absolutely do love uh, mixing the the trees and the plants on the lot with what's in the world though. I think it adds a nice little uh, immersive touch. I decided this time to go with a hosta plant instead of a regular bush. Because I, I just fancied something a little bit different for this house. And the hosta plants are, are really pretty. I absolutely love them. They're, they're absolutely gorgeous. And of course went with the, the standard hydrangeas. And now this is what I mean by uh, when I said, you know, if it's ugly, uh, camouflage it with flowers. Adding loads of different flowers here in this uh, wedge-shaped bed, including a little bit of uh, ground cover. Just... Like I said, just, just to hide it all. I think I did a pretty good job. It at least looks a lot better with the plants in. I said hide, hide everything. You know, plants. Plants are awesome. I think the vast majority of the, of the budget for the house went to the exterior, you know? As I, I just, I, I tend to get a little bit carried away with the exterior. I mean, I can easily get carried away with the interior, but in, in a 5x3 main living area, it's a bit difficult to do so. Uh, so, decided to add a few little rocks there, and then I decided a little water feature would be really, really nice right here by these rocks. I love the water fountains and such like in The Sims, but it's a royal pain in the neck because I wanted a little, the little fish fountain uh, to be spitting water out into a, a small pond. Only, um, I wanted it to be a very small pond. And as you see there, it just, it doesn't look right at all. And, and trying to make it deeper just, just makes the water go all over the place. And I, I just, I ended up reverting all the way back, um, to, to nothing. And then I put a, a, a proper fountain, uh, used the, the fountain tool. And even that annoyed me because I just wanted one square. I wanted the fountain to or the fish to to be resting on the edge of the fountain square you know, like on the outside and and just have it be one square like that but having the trim didn't look right and seem i mean it, it's just so fiddly couldn't get it to do anything that i wanted to do the the trim didn't look right with just a, a one by one so i made it turned it into a one by two still 
not happy with it, but it's, I, I just gave up. <laughs> At that point, I, I just gave up and, and went to uh, Terrain Tools to uh, add a little bit of dirt. Always add a little bit of dirt to the exterior of the house, just, just around the foundation. Is that if you go over to your your own house, you know, and you go outside and, and you look at the foundation, you know, grass doesn't grow there very much. It's always muddy and scraggly. So it, it just adds a little bit of realism, you know, to, to add that in as well. I had a lot of problems. I don't know why, um, but I had a lot of problems with the terrain paint on this one. The, uh, the cursor kept jumping around all over the place. I actually, I don't know what was causing it, but I mean, I... I saved the game and quit out and reloaded a few times uh, but yeah it just didn't work so I kind of just dealt with it went back to the inside now adding more things that, that this your sim needs you know a mirror uh, some plants for, for decoration there just wanted to try to make this a, as homey as possible so added that mirror then I decided a, a little splash back, you know, splash guard would be really nice here. So I tried to go for the lively, uh, sorry, go with that lively mural size down, but it, it didn't fit the theme of the house very well. So I thought, put that fish decal down, and I thought that that fit really well. So I decided to kind of make it a, a tiled splash back. Didn't bother too much with making it um, perfect. I just wanted something, you know, to, to wrap around where you can see it. You can see here, I decided, you know, put it there behind the fridge and thought maybe putting it all the way around, but yeah, just, just decided not not to do that there on the other side because it, it just, I couldn't get it to match up. So, st stuck with that. And then in the bathroom, went with a faded, the faded prawn decal as a wraparound uh, border for the wall. I tried going all the way around, but in a 1x3, you have to have the walls up in order to put decals on this because it, it just doesn't work otherwise. And, and you'll see here in a minute I, where I tried putting it all the way around, but I, I, I struggled. Um, I really struggled because I, I couldn't put, couldn't go into full wall, and that wall there just, I, I it wouldn't let me put the decals on, so I just gave up. Uh, if you can do it, hands up to you, but yeah, I, I figure you probably never see that wall anyway, so uh, it'll, it, it was fine. Added a few more plants in, uh, just for uh, to complete the homey feel. Bit of clutter, little cat inspiration poster. Really wanted to use that fox, but, um, or cat. I, I can never tell if that's a fox or a cat. It, I, I'm guessing, I mean, it's up to you, it can be either. I think it's supposed to be a cat, but it, it looks like a fox to me. Um, but yeah, so decided try to use that, but I, I just could not get, couldn't get it working properly. Uh, it kept wanting to, to snap right back to that uh, countertop. I even tried moving the countertop away, uh, and yeah, it, it just it still didn't work. I, I really wanted it on the top of that cupboard though. Ended up going with a pumpkin, a little autumnal uh, pumpkin with leaves uh, along the top of the cupboards really like that. My sister used to do that um, in her house when I lived with her. Always loved when, when she did it, so carried it on in, into this, this house. Now again, um, with adding just a little bit of clutter here to the TV stand, ended up going with the move objects, you know, alt placement cheat, where you move the things uh, you raise the thing up to the level of the furniture and where you want it, and then you put the furniture actually underneath it. Uh, that works so, so well with the things that have pre-made slots, because the pre-made slots are a pain in the neck. You can ne It's never realistic, so it's best just to do a little cheat. Decided to put a little suitcase there with some books. Now that's just a decorative thing, but you can add those little books to it. It works. Um, your your sim can actually get a book off of the uh, off that decorative item by by using the the stack of books. Went back outside, added more uh, terrain paint just under the trees there, uh, where you know the, the grass would naturally be sparse. Added a little bit more there um, around the house, and that's it. That uh, these five by five houses are are fairly quick. 
Overall, I think it took me about uh, two hours to do the entire lot. But it's a nice little house there. Uh, everything works. You'll see in a moment where I'm just testing uh, everything. But yeah, it's a nice little home uh, for your pet-loving sims. Obviously, this house probably doesn't have room for a cat, but you might be able to put a dog in. Plenty of outdoor space for the for the Sims dogs to run around in at the very least. It's making sure you can see there where uh, the book, showing that the books are, are properly usable. She can use the mirror, the TV, she can sleep. So it's a 100% usable house for your Sims. Just making sure again that she can cook. Canceled the wa welcome wagon. <laughs> So this is a micro home, 24 out of 32 tiles used. I added a few traits, added chef's kitchen, homey uh, Wi-Fi to it. Yeah, fast internet and so the cooking, the fast internet and the homey vibe. And of course with the micro home, there are a lot of perks. So uh, micro home is, is a really good one to do. All right then everyone, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this speed build. I really enjoyed making the house. It is of course over on the gallery and I uh, titled the house sort of five by five micro home. So feel free to give it a download and um, like this video if you liked it. And I will see you all next week with another five by five micro home challenge. Bye.